guys. Harlan, there you are, the three ringy dingy. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing all right. No complaints. I hear you talking about Kroger and the um, little cards. So isn't that crazy? Do you have a Kroger card? No, no we don't have Krogers up here, but um, we have a pick and save, which is owned by Roundies. Oh. And uh, they do the same thing. They really do. If you don't have a card, they just gorge you. Yeah. So, but the funny thing is, at the end, they say, you saved so much money with your card. But then you think about it, and you're like, you know, if you go to some of these uh, big warehouse discount stores, they're still even 20 to 30% cheaper than even if you had the card. So they're not really saving you any money at all. They just try to make you feel good, and they still gorge you. Uh, Harlan, where, where, where are you located at? You're in Chicago, right? Um, uh, no, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Oh, okay. All right, so what uh, what's your take on the market here? We'll just start out with your general market thoughts. Uh, kind of looked like we were slipping into the abyss yesterday, rallied back, closed on the highs, really no macro news out here. We have pulled back off the 2000 level. Uh, just give us, uh, you know, just your take, uh, overall take on the market. Well, I think yesterday in the S&P was really interesting. You know, we had that uh, support level at, uh, at what, um, 1990-ish, I think yep. it was? Yeah. 1990-ish, I think, was the uh, Friday's support. low. Friday's low was 1988.50, uh, and you also had another low right around the uh, 87.50 level. But uh, if when you looked at the daily and you just, you know, you do the eye test, you're correct. 1990 was the level. Yeah, and you can see that level when you uh, shorten up to a lighter, uh, smaller time frame and frequency. So, you know, how many people were sitting out there saying, you know what, this thing's been going sideways between, let's say, uh, 2010 and uh, 1990. Well, if it breaks 1990, uh, that's a breakdown uh, of that trading range. So I'm going to set my stop just below 1990. And what do you think the trading bots came in and did? They took all those people out, and then they ran the market. So kind of crazy to see that. So, uh, and then, you know, we were up from there. And just, when, you know, it's kind of one of these, just when you think they're going to kill them, they run them. And just when you think they're going to run them, they kill them. So, uh, you know, in a small frequency. But I don't really have anything bad to say. You know, you've got good support when you look at it daily uh, on the S&P at uh, the 50-day moving average. 1970, let's call it 1972, uh, which is interesting about that is because when you look at the August lows to the 2010 number highs, the 50-day moving average also happens to be a 38.2% Fibonacci retracement. So, you know, that's going to get defended if we were to go there. But uh, as far as the S&P is concerned, I've got nothing bad to say about it. As long as it's above the 50-day, you know, it's uh, all is well. NASDAQ did hold support. It was going sideways. It was really close there uh, for quite a while, but buyers came in and uh, pushed it right back up. So right now, you're still locked in a trading range on the NASDAQ. I'm going to call it uh, 4550, 46 and change. So there's your trading range. As long as we're um, going sideways, look at it this way, off the April lows, we're in a clearly defined uptrend. You go two steps forward, one step back, or you go sideways. And here we are. We're digesting the shorter term even uh, from August through present day. That whole big run there, we're digesting that in a sideways fashion. So you can call it range bound. You can call it base building. Um, you know, there's nothing nothing bad to say about it as of yet. So, uh what would turn you? I mean, I mean you just got to go with the trend. Spoos are down nine points this morning. That uh, uh, you know that doesn't that doesn't shake you a little bit. Pulling off that two thousand level, I guess. Yesterday, I know that I know the numbers you given are, are basis the the cash index, uh, mm-hmm. the futures. Do do you follow the rollover at all with the you know from the September to the D's and the futures contracts and the kind of peculiar things that go on with that, or do you just stick following the cash? I just stick following the cash. You know, I try and keep it as simple as possible and not to uh, complicate matters uh, anymore, you know, by adding to, you know, gosh, is this just another thing I got to sit and analyze and think about? 
So, you know, I want to keep things as simplistic as possible. So, so that's why I like using the daily charts six months with a 50 day moving average. Uh, and you know, and look where, you know, where are the supports? where's the trend, um, manage the overall trend, you know, where can, if, you know, as a risk manager, which we all should be in our, um, you know, every time you take a trade, you got to ask yourself, what's my risk? So, you know, the risk is the market pulls back right after you buy something. Okay. So is that risk? How much is that risk? If it's extreme, I don't want to take that trade, but you know, I'm willing to allow for fluctuation risk. So, you know, fluctuation risk for me in the S and P is okay. It's down nine points. All right. Well, there's good support, you know, at, uh, 1970. So, you know, if it comes down to 1970, expect it to get defended because there's two, uh, support levels there, the 50 day and the Fibonacci retracement. So, um, that's what I'm going to be watching. If we come down there uh, and we stabilize, then, you know, Hey, I might start doing some buying here, there, and, you know, in names that have structure that are also taking support. Okay. What are those names? What are those names, Harlan? Because we're looking you were here. Do that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if you're out there buying, we got to know what Harlan Pine is buying. So what do you got? For uh, you, Harlan? Wow. What a rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Harlan Pine. Hope he's not. Good. I should have been around. I hope he's not that, that, buying. That, that, Harlan's no. buying, not buying, and then ended up crying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Wow, you guys are uh, poets, and you don't even know it. Or are you lying? So, dying <laughs> well, you know, let's let's just look at it this way. I mean, uh, grab a six month chart. Grab a six month chart of cell gene. Okay. You know, you can clearly see off the April lows. This thing, it just, it's above the 50-day moving average. What's the overall trend of the stock? Obviously, from April through present day, it's uh, LLUR, lower left to the upper right. And, you know, it's in a clearly defined trend, uptrend above the 50-day. And what's it doing? It's just pulling back off its high. So, you know, this is what I'm talking about, managing the overall trend of the stock. So you can clearly see it's just working its way higher. Um, let's take a look at another one. How about, uh, let me find it here. How about GBX? Same thing. Off the April lows through present day, what's the overall trend of the stock? You know, so clearly bullish? defined uptrend. Wait, GDX? George David or George Bravo X. Oh, okay. I'm, I was going to say the miners I'm looking at the miners like, <laughs> Harlan is, uh, yeah. okay. Right. Uh, Yep, I, I agree with you on those. Those will work. Uh, B, one more, uh, Dennis and I, uh, you know, when I pull up crude on uh, my platforms, I, instead of doing slash or at CL, I do CL, and that's Colgate Palmolive. Oh, Madge was into commercials. What do you think of, I mean, now this one, you don't like the overall trend, right? Because it came off, off the highs on Col CL, Colgate, Palmolive. Because this is, is this, a, I mean, I guess if you go to a weekly here, oh, yeah, yeah, you can like it off the weekly. Yeah, but uh, of, what yeah. do you think? Low risk buy here, stop out at that August 1st low? Or is the, don't you like the overall trend here coming off the highs? Well, you, a little you know, bit. this is a little different animal. But I will say this. Um, when I talked about keeping it simple, stupid, um, just look at uh, going back through March. Okay. You know, from March all the way through the July highs. See it? It was in a clearly defined uptrend. That's the beauty of if your whole account looks like Colgate Palmolive from, um, let's just say April through the July highs, you can clearly see a nice, clearly defined uptrend, and it's really easy to manage your account. So when were you going to get out of that issue? If you are managing that overall trend, you can see the moment it broke the 50-day moving average, um, that was your cue to get out of Dodge because guess what? It broke its clearly defined uptrend. So that goes hand in hand with what I was talking about with cell gene and things like that. It's really easy to manage your account from that perspective. But moving to current day, um, I'm looking at all this stuff in August here. Well, let's just take it off the July highs through now. Um, you know, this could be a double bottom. It's a defensive issue too. Correct. So, yeah. yep. you know, think about it. Um, one could say you got a double bottom at this 63 ish zone. Um, I got nothing bad to say about it right here. If you're one of these types of people that like to, uh, buy issues in the gutter, uh, <laughs> buy a defensive issue, people got to brush their teeth. 
So, uh, you know, I've got really, no, it's, you know, it's not got a lot of scale. And you know where you're you know, out. You know, you know where your out is here in this, if you're yeah. purchasing it in the 64s. Okay, Rob Hood has been waiting patiently here. Uh, yeah. RDNT, Radnet Incorporated, uh, Gap and Go Consolidation here. Is this one uh, catching your fancy here between six fifty and seven seven dollars since uh, basically the middle of August here? Is this getting you excited on the long side? Well, jumps out at me is it's a huge base. You know, look at June through present day. You know, this thing has just been going sideways, bumping its head on. Uh, let's just say, you know, seven and a half. So, you know, it's got a three months working on four months uh, basing structure here. So if it breaks out, it could be a break out of a nice, nice big basing pattern. So uh, I've got nothing bad to say about it. So it's got to break out, though. That's just it. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, going to an even shorter time frame, you know, August through present day, draw a line across six and a half. You know, oh, if it's six yeah. and a half, yeah. there's yeah. a gap. Hey, Rob, I'll just uh, point out to you, you hit 7.23 yesterday, you pulled back to close at 7.08. You had a high on August 8th at 7.24 as well, and uh, so you want to clear there. Did get that first close over $7 in a long time. So like to see, this is one you just like to see hold 7 and uh, some big bids in there and uh, take it up higher. Okay, one more issue from, uh, from Rob Hood here. EFTC, I believe that's uh, E Trade. Yeah, yeah E-trade let's financial. take a look. We haven't talked about the brokers that much here. Uh, we got any opinion on this one? Uh, what was that symbol again? E- e- looking at E Trade, ETFC. ETFC. E Trade. This actually is interesting, too. I think that Rob Hood, he's starting to know these Harlan Pyan shirts here because he had the stock he's moving like up. Pulled back, and now it's trying to test and bump its head up, head up against that 23 resistance level. If it could start sticking its head above there, it could be interesting. Yeah, you, you can start to see how he thinks when you look at his stocks that he's looking at, right? And so it's a good thing. Um, yeah, draw a line across 23. What more do you need to know? You know, if it crosses over 23, one could say it's a breakout. You know, and then where's resistance? Eh, 25-ish. So uh, I got nothing bad to say about it. You know, it's just bottom line is it's got to break out. And then we got SF Bright here in the chat, and he's looking at Macy's today. Macy's did get downgraded, and it's ex-dividend, too. So two things happening. Macy's going ex-dividend for $0.31, cents, which adjusts the close down to fifty nine sixty, and then getting the downgrade from Stern AG there, and the stock is trading down another $0.60. Cents. So it's trading at 59 bucks here in the pre-market. This was one that was pulling back off of the highs, but now it's significantly pulling back off those highs. What are your thoughts here, Harlan? Well, I, I think what's interesting is look where it came from at the August lows. It shot, you know, right from the gutter right up into that 62. So, you know, and you can see that, you know, the moment it started taking off from 55 and a half, uh, it really spent zero time consolidating uh, its move along the way. You know, it just went straight up. Um, one could say, you know, you talk about gaps getting filled. I call this like an air pocket. You know, when you get these just straight up moves with zero consolidation along the way to digest some of that move, you know, when you get into uncertain times uh, or even, you know, news driven events, you know, in a bad sense, they're going to go and fill those air pockets just like they do gaps. So that being said, you know, the 50 day moving average is at 59. So where did you say it was right now? It's trading right around 59 bucks. 58.77, 58.78, 58.79. It's kind of just chopping around in there. All right, Dennis. Right. Get... It is a pullback off highs, but, but you know, overall, look at it off of April through present day. It's really wide and loose. So it's kind of hard to get it. You know, it surely looks nothing like a cell gene, which is nice and orderly. So, so you want to, you know, if you want to reduce your stress, you know, stay away from the wide and loose names. And start to look for the names that are in orderly, you know, pullbacks and orderly trends. Okay, you know, it just reduces your stress. So, I've yeah. got one for you then, and it's a crazy one. We've got to look at Digital Ally, D-G-L-Y. Stock has went from 3 bucks to 33 bucks. It's been pulling back here. Harley's nice sweating the last four right now. Or five days. 
Harlan, so it has pulled back yeah. off those highs. Now it's getting <laughs> it a is. pop here in the pre-market. It's popping $2. This is the day it's going to start to run here again? Gosh, who knows? I mean, <laughs> I you know, I guess if you like speculating on the edge of a cliff, <laughs> uh, you know, more power to you. You know, and, and, you know, we've talked about this for the last couple of weeks, and it's just not the type of thing that I look at. You know, when I see a stock that goes from like $3 to you know, seven and a half in a couple of days or even 10, um, you know, it's extended. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, I mean, I stopped looking at it right then and there. So, you know, it just kind of makes you wonder if it's going to be one of these, who's going to be the greatest fool. And so, um, miss trade, you know, I can see the pullback off highs in here, but you know what? I see a lot of thin air too. So, so who knows what it's going to do up in here. I mean, you know, if someone's got a better gauge on it than I do, more power to them. It's just, it's not something that, based on my methodology, uh, that I'd even be looking at. Hey, hey, uh, going back to the Macy's chart, Dennis, and let's see if you uh, still know my method of technical analysis here. What am I looking at here, Dennis, uh, in, the, uh, in the Macy's? What would be a key level I'd be focusing on for the next couple of days in, this, in the Macy's chart? Well, you like all your little gaps, and I do see a little gap. What there, else? That's a what, mini what, gap. what else is looking at this one when you see the low to move up to the high there? What what would I be focusing on? The fifty percent retracement. Exactly fifty nine forty five. Until this thing gets back above and holds fifty nine forty five, I'm not. That's keep an eye on that level. Uh, we do have a couple more coming out. Uh, TVIX. Do you see this as a good risk reward ratio? T V I X. Oh yeah. yeah, I knew this was coming. Um, I hate you know. Here's the VIX. I hate those products. Those T. Those all those Amen. products. They just continue to erode down over time. They are day trading vehicles. Do not. I will say this. You know, this is something you don't <laughs> want to hold in your portfolio long term. These are short term trading vehicles. Over time, these things continue to drift down. So if you, you know what's interesting them, about them? That's fine. If you want to invest in these things, not a good idea. I agree with you totally. Okay. You know, I, I mean, what's interesting is we've been looking for you know volatility, volatility. You know what? You're seeing the volatility out there, and the volatility just so happens to be more so in individual stocks than it is in the VIX. You know, on its own. So you know, I don't even like playing this myself. I, I don't even look at it. So, you know, I just think there's better better places to fish uh, than in something like this. So there's just a lot of really short-term crazy money in it. So, you know, personally, I'm going to go with Dennis on this. Okay, let's finish up with the uh, the darling of Wall Street here, Apple. A crazy day uh, when they uh, unveiled their new products. Uh, gave a lot back, rallied back now. Uh, one more shot. Uh, wants to see what you think about this, uh, your opinion on the short side. It's kind of trading in no man's land here for me after that move up. You got, you got any opinion on Apple? Yeah, the last two days were uh, pretty nuts. They really are. They kind of mucked up the chart quite a bit. Um, but if you back out that, you know, those two big days here in the last two days, you know, it's clearly defined trend off of the, uh, I'm going to say May lows, you know, there's your trend line, line up all the lows, which also just happens to be the 50 day moving average zone. So, you know, as long as it's above that, uh, upward trending support line and the 50 day, you know, it's in an uptrend. You know, of course, you've also got resistance up in that 103 zone. So, you know, if you're there, you just kind of stick with it. But, you know, if it breaks that uh, uptrend line and the 50-day, you might want to get defensive on a little bit of it. So, um, for me, I, you know, I'm just not just trading it right here because you're right. Right now with this range, 50-day to 103, it's just stuck in no man's land right and if you With a lot of hype if you took if you take out that uh that erroneous day there 98 is the major level on the downside here you had a low there yesterday and going back in a few sessions uh longer term i think that 100 number still keeps comes into play psychological you still hold above 100 i think you're good to go to the upside i think if this slipped uh underneath a hundred today i don't know where the daily pivot in this uh but maybe one more shot take a look at that well it's eight five five harlan 
we got to let you, you know. Go. Who's, who's not to say it just doesn't go sideways here? That's true. You know, I mean, remember, this thing makes up a huge percentage of the indexes. So, and it does have a big impact. So, who's not to say it's just not going to go, uh, you know, 98 to 103 and go range bound here uh, and chew you alive and build a nice big base? You know, that's what you like to see. So, just remember, it's a big index driver. Okay. It's going to have an impact.